Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome back to our uh, Sabbath School uh, lesson presentation for uh, series number eight, uh, May 20, 2023, uh, entitled The Sabbath and the End. Uh, as of now, you most probably know already that uh, uh, we are towards the end of the discussion on uh, the book of Revelation 14, in which uh, about worship. And uh, today, we are going to deal with uh, uh, very particular uh, uh, items in which, uh, you know, uh, talking about uh, the, the, the Sabbath and the end, the eschatological discussion that we need to uh, understand what it means. Uh, so uh, here is our key text today. In Ephesians 3, 9, and to, and, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. So who created all things through Jesus Christ. So uh, in this week's lesson, uh, we will probe more deeply into the meaning of the Sabbath in our personal lives and discover how a proper understanding of the Sabbath influence our attitudes, our choices, and our actions. And this week, we will also study how the Sabbath we will, uh, will be the, law, the focal point of an end-time crisis over the law of God. And Satan's final attack will be on the Sabbath because the Sabbath is embedded in the heart of God's law and as the eternal symbol of his creative authority. So this morning, we are going to discuss uh, here in our outline about our subject today. Uh, the famed Jewish author Abraham Heschel calls the Sabbath a place in time. Sabbath is a moment in time to meet personally with our creator and redeemer and to worship him. So it's a moment to acknowledge that we have been created as unique beings. It's time to remember that God loves us and that we are immensely important for him. So here are the subtopics that we are going to do, talk about. Sabbath and moral freedom. Uh, Sabbath and creation. Uh, Sabbath and evolution. And then Sabbath and the end time. So these are uh, Sabbath and eternity. So these are the subtopics that we are going to uh, discuss uh, this morning uh, in details about uh, uh, the, the discussion of our this lesson this morning. So uh, let's talk about Sabbath and the moral freedom. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, Romans 14.10. And so God will judge Everyone, therefore, he considers every person morally responsible for their own actions. We are accountable before God for everything we do and think. And we are, why does God have to the right to hold accountable for how we use our moral freedom? So uh, God is our creator, and he made a moral law, Ten Commandments, that, that determines which moral decisions are right? James chapter 2, verses 8 to 12. So the fourth commandment, the Sabbath, reminds us of the reason we should keep the law. God created us. Exodus 28 to 11. So this morning, uh, we have, last week we talked about, uh, you know, the, can, the concept of evolution and creation. And evolution is a dehumanizing if I am enlarged protein molecule, I am simply a product of chance. Or if I am only an advanced form of animal, life has little meaning. I am merely uh, of the 8 billion people clawing, clawing at one another for the living space on a planet called Earth. By contrast, uh, creation provides a moral imperative for living. God has created me, and I am accountable to him for my action. The one who made me and holds me responsible has established absolutes 
in a world of relativism. And the first angels of Revelation 14 declare that the hour of his judgment has come. Since God created us with the capacity to make moral choices, we are responsible for the decision we make. If we were merely random collections of cells or product of our heredity and environment, our actions should be determined by forces which we have no control. Judgment implies moral responsibility. In this crisis hour of Earth's history, the judgment hour of God calls us to make decisions in the light of eternity. So evolution provides no moral ethic for living since it proclaims that humans are advanced animals, the highest standard of human mind. Morality is determined from within. There is no absolute, eternal standard to govern behavior. Creation, by contrast, provides us the sense of directions and purpose. The God who created us provides, in his word, guidelines for living. His commands are always for our good. We are not left alone to battle with life's forces. He has revealed what is right in his word and gives us the power to do what is right through the Holy Spirit. So, on Monday's uh, lesson, Sabbath and Creation, it says that uh, uh, Monday's lesson emphasizes link between creation and the Sabbath. Sabbath is a symbol of rest, not works, of grace, not legalism, of assurance, not condemnation, of depending upon him, not upon ourselves. Each Sabbath, we rejoice in the goodness and praise him for the salvation that can be found only in Christ. So I believe that the great purpose of the Sabbath is to remind us of the truth that is the basis of our faith, uh, the very truth that does set us free. Because we were created free moral being. In the first place, the Bible tells in Exodus 20 and Exodus 31 that the Sabbath is designed to serve as a reminder that God created us, that we are his creatures. Because it says there that remember the Sabbath day. So it's a reminder and that we are his creatures. To be more specific, according to Colossians 1.16, the one who created us, none other than Christ himself. And the seventh day Sabbath reminds us that the one who came to save us is also the one who made us in the beginning. The gentle Jesus who died on the Calvary is also the supreme, all-powerful creator of the universe. God did not send some subordinate person to die for us. The creator came himself, one who is equal with God, for he is God. By keeping holy the seventh day, Sabbath, we acknowledge our faith in Jesus as not only our Savior, but also our Creator and our God. And secondly, <coughs> in which we Seventh Adventists, Seventh Sabbath, I mean, serves to strengthen faith, is mentioned in Exodus 31 13 and Exodus 20 12 to 20, where we are told Sabbath is designed to remind us that God is the one who sanctifies us. Our sanctification includes not just forgiveness, but the healing of the damage he has done, a man has done. It means the harmonious development of our physical, mental, and spiritual powers until the image of God in which we are originally created is perfectly restored. The observance of the seventh Sabbath is an acknowledgement that only the Creator can perform such marvelous work of healing and transformation. That is, in one word, recreation. Just as He created us in the beginning, so He has the power to recreate us now. Surely it is no less a miracle to create them perfect in the beginning. No wonder why David prayed as he did after his sad experience with Bathsheba, 
Create in me a heart, clean heart, O God, in Psalms 51.10. Now, some seek to accomplish this transformation by themselves, by rigorous obedience, self-discipline, and self-denial. The Sabbath comes each week to remind us that only by faith in our Creator can be the healing work would be done. It's strange that the Sabbath keeping should be thought to be legalistic act, a denial of true faith. Actually, Sabbath keeping done in the right spirit is a denial of legalism, a denial that we can save ourselves as an acknowledgement that only by faith is the one who created us in the beginning can possibly be healed and recreate now. And what a perversion it is to suggest that Seventh-day Sabbath is legalism, except that we can turn it around that way, and it has been done. So there are more course, of course, but three focuses on the purposes of the Sabbath answers the three great questions that have stood in the minds of thinking people. The three great questions of philosophy is that, where have we come from? Why are we here? And where do we go after we die? So in that questions, humankind has paid a heavy price for neglecting the Sabbath or substituting another day. For without the Sabbath to provide the answers to the great questions of life, other solutions have been substituted. And where we have been come from without the seventh Sabbath to remind us in the beginning that Christ created us, Rome has been left for substitution in the theory of evolutionary origin of the human race. As for others' way, more scientifically, we don't know where we have come from. Why are we here? Why do we attain the, great food, you know, the greatest good in life without the seventh Sabbath to remind us that righteousness and salvation come by faith in Jesus Christ? Rome has been left for substitution of fundamental error of righteousness by works. Or as others have said more carelessly, we don't know why we are here. So let's eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. And where do we go after we die? Without the seventh Sabbath to point forward to the second coming, to the rewards of faith, and the result of sin, room has been left for the substitution of the belief in the natural immortality of the soul. Or as others prefer to say, we don't know where we go after we die. So again, let's eat, drink, and be merry. And so incidentally, those three substitute answers aren't the almost universally held, and not just in Christianity. Belief in natural immortality of the soul is shared by almost everybody the idea that salvation comes by works, Ellen White states that the fundamental error of every false religion system, salvation by works. There are all kinds of substitute explanation as to where we came from that God in a bad light or make it in no effect to the plan of salvation. But all three of the substitutions wipe out all the significance of the plan of salvation. This is why the Seventh-day Sabbath is so vital, a part of God's last message to the world. The main difference between many religions in the world and true Christianity lies in the answer to this three great question. So Sabbath and creation, in essence, is very, very important context and connections. Then it said, God bless the seventh day, and sanctified it because it is he who rested from all his works which God had created and made in Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. So, Sabbath was made for man, not for a specific group of people. Uh, Sabbath was even made even before Christ, evolution's theory appeared. So, uh, we cannot just simply say that Sabbath is a response to what happened in 1844. It's been there since the beginning of this earth. And so, you know, 
we need to understand that after finishing the creation of earth and all living beings on it, God created the day, the Sabbath. So if you notice here in our discussion today, in the creation story, God created space in six days. But he created time on the seventh day. You see the difference? And so this is very important for us to understand that Sabbath was created for sinless world. It was a moment of special relationship with God. It was created before sin entered this world. This world. Sin. After sin, Sabbath became special for several reasons. However, we need to distinguish here that sin has already existed in the universe, right there in heaven. And so, you know, uh, when, 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 when Satan came here to this earth after the creation of Adam and Eve, tempted them, uh, there was already, you know, the, the controversy that who are you going to worship? So right there at the beginning in the Garden of Eden, now Satan is trying to twist the idea of who is supreme. And so, uh, you know, uh, it's a token of loyalty to the Creator. It says here that uh, it reminds us that we are children of God. And then, of course, it encourages us to rest in God and rejoice in Him. It's a reminder of our redemption. And then, of course, it allows us to rejoice in God's kindness. It's a special moment to worship our Creator and Redeemer. And, of course, it's a link between Eden and the New Earth. So, here we can see that uh, uh, with, with thinking about this, we can, uh, in our Tuesday's lesson, it says, a not-so-subtle deception. Uh, Tuesday's lesson emphasizes the literal six-day creation versus the evolutionary theory of long ages and the fact that keeping Sabbath in context would make absolutely no sense at all. Because it is, in here, it is because our world is so desperately needs the reassuring message of creation that God gave us the Sabbath. God gave the Sabbath to everyone in the beginning with the first man and woman, Adam and Eve, and continuing to all people throughout history. He reminded, he reminded his res, rescued people fresh out of Egypt of its radical nature, Exodus 16 and Exodus 20. And in the person of Jesus, he corrected a distorted understanding of Sabbath in the first century Judaism. So Sabbath and evolution in our lesson says that for he spoke and it was done, he commanded and it stood fast. He says, not only spoke, but on the first day, on the second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, and sixth day. <coughs> the Bible explains how God created the world. The Hebrew word for day, yum, with a number ag first, is always used for a 24-hour period there are no exceptions. And then Genesis' account of creation cannot support the idea that it took extended periods of time. On the contrary, the Sabbath is emphasized because God created our world in six days and rested on the seventh day. And of course, uh, the founders of the Adventist church were especially interested in the Sabbath in the mid-19th century, in 1845. The theory of evolution arose in that same moment, attacking the foundation of Sabbath and creation. Satan has tried to destroy this memorial of creation. So uh, that is, uh, uh, it says, uh, here is a quotation from, uh, <coughs> uh, the Bible recognizes that no long ages in which the earth was slowly evolved, from chaos. Of its successive day of creation, the sacred record declares that it consisted of the evening and morning, like all other days that have followed. 
at the close of each day is given a result of Creator's work. The statement is made at the close of the first week record. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created, Genesis 2.4. But this does not convey the idea that the days of creation were other than literal days. Each day was called a generation because that, that in it God generated or produced some new portions of his work. And so the Bible, uh, it says here that the creation of the Sabbath and end time story is very important in our discussion today. Uh, when's this lesson uh, says here, talks about the Sabbath as a test in the eschatological end times in Revelation 14, 7 and 9 and 12. So let's read the text here. Revelation 14, verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him whom with the heavens and the earth, the sea and the springs of water. A third, in verse 9, said, A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives its mark on their forehead and on their hand. And so in verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So verse 7 is warning us about two worship. The one that we are going to worship, the beast, and the one that's going to worship Jesus Christ. So here, in the devil's final deception, he will attempt to coerce God's people to serve him uh, through restricting their ability to buy or sell, through a ridicule or slander, through persecution, imprisonment, and even death. He will pressure them to conform. And while Revelation 14, 7 invites us to worship the Creator, in Revelation 14, verse 9, warns against worshiping the beasts. The final conflict between good and evil is over worship. A similar conflict over worship occurred when Daniel and his friends were captives in Babylon. A counterfeit image was established in the plain of Dura. King Nebuchadnezzar commanded all his subjects to bow down and worship the golden idol. A decree was passed condemning to death everyone who did not down, uh, bow down and worship the golden image. The second commandment, forbidding and making a worship of idols, became the test of Hebrew captives. They entrusted themselves to the God completely because of their loyalty and trust. They were known in the fiery I mean, they were thrown into the fiery furnace, but God protected them. Jesus, the Son of Man, entered the flames with him and provided divine protection. In the final of Earth's, in the final days of Earth's history, the world will be brought to a test over the fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, Exodus twenty verse eight. The commandment that leads all humanity to worship the Creator will be substituted by a counterfeit. They are worship. Once again, God will have a people who are faithful to him in, here in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and faith of Jesus. So if you notice here, the faith of Jesus, God's remnant, his last day people, will endure the end by his grace and through his power, they will keep his commandments. Notice the significance of the Sabbath in Revelation 14, 7, 19, 12. Is that Revelation uh, verse 14, 7 is a call to worship the Creator, fear God and give glory to Him, for the judgment has come. In Revelation 14, 9 and 10, a solemn appeal not to worship 
the beast. And a third angel followed him and said in a loud voice, If anyone worship the beast and its image, receive its mark on the forehead, on their hand, too, will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of the of his wrath. And then, of course, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, describes the people who worship the Creator and do not worship the beast. This calls the patience of the saints in, here in verse 12. You see, these passages make it clear that worship is the central issue in the conflict of good and evil, Christ and Satan in the last days. And two ways of worshiping are contrasted in these verses, worshiping the Creator and worshiping the beast. We have already discovered that Sabbath is God's eternal sign of worshiping Him as the Creator in Revelation 14.12, reveals that those who by faith of Jesus, are loyal to God in earth's final crisis and keep his commandments in the face of ridicule, opposition, persecution, and death. The heart of the Sabbath is a relationship acknowledging that God is worthy of our most supreme devotion, our deep allegiance, and total loyalty. They will obey because of the faith of Jesus fills their heart and every aspect of their lives. And the same quality of faith that Jesus had when he faced the cross, they too will experience. They will place absolute confidence in the Heavenly Father. This trust relationship with God will take them through earth's final conflict. The heart of this week's lesson is understanding that the one who created us will care for us in earth's final crisis. Keeping the Sabbath reveals our trust in Jesus, our Creator, Redeemer, Intercessor, and the Coming King. This is God's appeal to each one of us in the light of His final judgment. Obedience to His law is the fruit of our faith. So, in our Sunday's end time lesson is that... <coughs> Uh, here is the patience of the saints. We already read that. And the final message is a call to worship the Creator and not the enemy. This call is closely related to observing the Ten Commandments. And the conflict itself is not related to loving our neighbor, the first six commandments, but to loving God, the first four commandments. And of course, uh, in Revelation 23, do not have other gods, and 24 to 6, Revelation 13 to 14, uh, 14 to 15, do not make carved images. And then honor uh, the name of God in Exodus 27, Revelation 13, 17. And worship the Creator, Exodus 28 to 11, Revelation 13, 16. So here we can see that the mark will be received at the end. Time will show who we worship. God on Sabbath day, or the beast on Sunday. So this is a clear distinction between the two worship. And so uh, uh, in our discussion this evening, uh, we are going to deal with uh, Thursday's lesson here, the Sabbath and eternal rests. Thursday's lesson connects the Sabbath with eternal rest in heaven. The Sabbath is a metaphor for paradise and a testimony of God's presence in our prayers, we anticipate a messianic era that will be a Sabbath. And each Shabbat prepares us for that experience. Unless one learns how to relish the taste of the Sabbath, one will, unable, one will be unable to enjoy the taste of eternity in the world to come. Uh, Abraham, by Abraham Hitchell. So, uh, in this context, the Sabbath and eternal rests, and Isaiah 65, 17, we are going to read, and Isaiah 66, 22 to 23, 2 Peter 3, 13, and Revelation 21, 1. How does keeping the Sabbath points us forward to eternity? And uh, 
Isaiah 65, 17, it says, See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The more former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. And then, in Isaiah 66, 22 to 23, As the new heavens and the new earth that I make, I will endure, will endure before me, declares the Lord. So will your name and descendants endure. From one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. And of course, uh, in 1 Peter uh, 3.13, but in keeping with this promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. And in Revelation 21.1, it says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first, time, first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any days in the sea, I mean. So, uh, the Sabbath and eternity is a blessing. Now it shall come to pass from new moon to new moon. 66, 23. Isaiah, I mean, Isaiah 6. And from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come and worship before me. So, uh, each week, we set our worldly worries aside and enter God's rest, the Sabbath. And why will the Sabbath still exist in the new earth if there will be no more worries and we will be living close to God's throne? Revelation 23. Remember the Sabbath as the day of rest and communion with God was introduced in a sinless world. Before, uh, I mean, in a sinless world, that means to say before Adam and Eve committed sin, God has already given them the Sabbath. Right there in the creation story. The seventh day, he created the Sabbath. And of course, uh, 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 once the earth is recreated, Sabbath will still be a day of rest and communion with God. Isaiah 66, 23. And each of our Sabbath anticipates our eternity with Jesus in the new earth. So, Sabbath serves to remind us the truth and strengthens our faith in God is mentioned in Hebrews chapter 4. And there the Sabbath is described as a type and a foretaste of the final rest and the restoration to come. Just as God rested from his labors at the end of creation week, so there remains a Sabbath-like rest. The Greek says, Sabbatismus. And you can, only, you can almost hear the meaning of the word. There remains, uh, there remains there a Sabbath-like rest for the people of God when the children of Israel march into the land of Canaan they failed to enter into God's rest. The apostle says, because lack of faith, they possessed the promised land, but they did not enjoy, you know, the, the Sabbath-like rest that faith brings. Just remember that the book of Judges, would you call that Sabbath-like rest? That is not God's intention. But those who maintain their faith in Christ may begin to enjoy the rest, this rest even in this life and they will enter into it fully when they are admitted into the heavenly canon and Eden restored. So by keeping holy the seventh Sabbath, we acknowledge our anticipation of the Sabbath the rest to come. We acknowledge our faith in the second coming, Christ and recreation of all things. So the Sabbath is beautifully representing a forever relationship with God. It stretches from the Garden of Eden at creation to the garden that God will make this planet at the end of time. It stretches from paradise lost to paradise restored. We need that kind of forever in our lives. We need a place that reassures us that we are an eternal relationship with the Heavenly Father. We need a palace in time, as Herschel said, where there is assurance can sink in deep place that says our Heavenly Father will always be there for us. 
In the Sabbath, we can find a sense of contented rest. We can get in touch with our roots as His children there. We can grow and mature there. Yes, we need that kind of forever place that ties the whole of our lives to an eternal relationship with God. So the message of the three angels flying through the heavens, appealing for us to worship the Creator, is heaven's answer to the hopelessness, hopeless despair of many in the first 21st century. It is the answer to the, the dehumanizing philosophy of atheistic evolution. It is the answer to worry, tension, and fear. It is the answer to a lack of power and purpose. It is the answer to the hopelessness of our society because it points to Jesus, the God of today, tomorrow, and forever. So, the question today is that we need to, before I close here, I'd like to make a comment. Is it about the day? The seventh day? You know, and, and, and this is really a question because during the time of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> when he came here on earth, the, the Sabbath keepers during a time misunderstood the meaning of the Sabbath. And although they keep the right day, but they have the wrong attitude towards the Creator. You know, and this is very important context that we need to realize. Even today, uh, you go to a particular city somewhere here in this world where uh, you can drive there, uh, you know, in one of the cities there, one of the countries, uh, and you will, during the Sabbath day, and you will be, uh, realize that your car is vandalized because you drove, you know, that day that in which they think it's holy. You know, and so this is very important for us to realize that it's more than a day. It's about a relationship. It's about knowing who God is. It's about remind, being reminded and remembering that God, who is our creator, also is our savior. And without that relationship with our Jesus Christ, you know, a right relationship, because sometimes we have a wrong picture about it. It is about freedom, not legalism, not strict obedience, but rather you are free because you are created, you know, a free moral being. And, you know, so in, in, in today's world, we need to understand fully and uh, in, in, in a deeper sense that remember the Sabbath day of rest, and communion with God was introduced in a sinless world. How much more we need it today, where we need to rest from our struggle, from our challenges, you know. And so, uh, to summarize our discussion today, this morning, in our lesson. In this crisis hour of Earth's history, the judgment our God calls us to make a decision in the light of eternity. And of course, a decision that we can make because we are free moral agent. And our actions are based on that decision. What do we decide? Are we on the side of our Creator, our Redeemer, or are we in the side of the beasts? You know? And Scripture calls us to rest on His love and care each Sabbath. Each Sabbath is a reminder that he cares for us. He loves us. He died for us. And he wanted us to rest in his love and care. It's day. It's, I mean, it's Sabbath. This is every week, you know. And so, you know, and uh, by faith, we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. Hebrews 11, 3. And even in Hebrews chapter it says that there is still, you know, the rest for the wicked. Uh, you know, because in this sinful, tainted world, including us, 
uh, we need to have faith that understands the world were framed by the word of God. Not by chance, not by long evolutionary process, but by the word of God. Because on the first day, God created. Second day, God created. Third day, God created. Fourth day, God created. Fifth day, God created. And on the sixth day, God created and made man in his own image. That's where we were created. That's where we came from. You know, the questions of where did I come from? You are created in the image of God. The word of God says there. So the Sabbath is a place of refuge in a weary world. That's what we really need. You know, in this restless world, sometimes we need it. We need a place of refuge. And so this is now my last slide here. Pointing to God as a maker of the heavens and the earth. It distinguishes the true God from all false gods. All who keep the seventh day signify that his act that they are worshippers of Jehovah. Thus the Sabbath is a sign of man's allegiance to God as long as there are any upon the earth to serve him. Wow. So that is our lesson for today. And may it be that as we think it through in this crisis, thinking about the eschatological meaning of, uh, you know, uh, of, uh, I have a comment here to make uh, in this context. Because uh, a 70 uh, woman, lay woman, Rachel Ox Preston, testified about the Sabbath belief to the Belirites, but it was only after the great disappointment that the Sabbath doctrine was accepted among the splinter groups of the Miller's movement during the 1844, and which we organized in 1863, who had a Seventh-day Adventist church with 3,500 members today, uh, the the uh, the seventy Baptists uh, have nineteen conferences in thirty countries, with a membership over twenty thousand members, while seventy Adventists have seven hundred thirty-one conferences and two hundred twelve countries with about over twenty-two million members. Now, what makes the difference between these two? Think about it, because of the eschatological emphasis that we have. And it be that uh, as long as there is a people around the earth to serve him, Sabbath will exist even into the future, pointing to God as a maker. Let's pray. The Lord, today, thank you again for this wonderful opportunity that we can think about the Sabbath day as a heaven for us to uh, be able to rest from our weariness in this world. And thank you, Lord, for that blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.